Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, I wanna show a new Docker container that I'd recently discovered called PicoShare, which is a cool new way to share files from your Docker server. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page, and right here you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see the Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So the other day I was scrolling through Reddit like I do very, very often, and I ran across this post uh, from somebody by the username of M.T. Lynch. And uh, he was advertising a, a, a Docker container or a, a service, whatever you want to call it, uh, called PicoShare, which says a minimalist way to easy to host or a minimalist, easy to host service for sharing images and other files. And I was intrigued by that. Uh, a while back, we looked at a service called Bone Drop, uh, which was kind of targeted towards, uh, towards uh, people wanting to share uh, sensitive data, that kind of thing, like uh, kind of hacker style stuff was kind of their, 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 their shtick there. And this kind of feels a little bit like that without the shtick, without the gimmick, uh, just a very straightforward file sharing service. And that's what I want to show you guys today. Uh, what I did find interesting is when I saw this post, I was like, this username seems familiar to me. And I could not figure out why. But then, actually, let's jump over here <clears throat> uh, to uh, to this Pico share over on GitHub. If we open this up, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this is the same guy who made Tiny Pilot, and I actually still use my Tiny Pilot very, very regularly. I've done a few videos on it. Uh, so this guy's a, a software developer and uh, worked for Google for a while and uh, is now doing his own thing. And when I discovered that he was the guy behind this, I really wanted to uh, to share it with you guys just because I like what, uh, what Michael Lynch does. So uh, if we actually jump over here, um, here it is, it's installed on my server. Uh, here it says, uh, what is PicoShare? It's a service for sharing uh, images, videos, and other files. On PicoShare, only you can upload files. You can share links to those files with anyone, and they never have to sign up for an account. Uh, it also puts you in full control, which means you can share direct download links without forcing guests to have to go to one of those sketchy third-party sites where there's ads everywhere. You don't know if you're actually clicking the download link or anything like that. We're not gonna do any of that with this. It's very, very straightforward. Uh, there's also no restrictions on file type, file size, or what content you can upload. That is all at your discretion, of course. Uh, it never resizes or re-encodes any of your media files. So basically it kind of just FTPs the files up. I don't know if that's the actual protocol that's being used, but uh, just think of it kind of that way. It gets uploaded by you. you. It generates a link, which I'll show you in a minute. And then you can share that link with whoever you'd like to share it with. Uh, after that, it says, uh, it pr preserves the original file name and metadata of your files. Again, doesn't try to, 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 to mess with anything. It keeps the file as original as it was when it was on your system before you uploaded it to PicoShare here. So uh, it says it's easy to self-host uh, and there's links to, to all kinds of different stuff in here. Uh, up at the top right-hand corner, there's a login button. And if we click that and enter our password, uh, we can just click on authenticate right there. And here we are. I haven't actually uploaded anything here. Uh, well, I have, I've tested it. Um, <clears throat> but this is uh, what we're gonna call an old version. <clears throat> now, the reason I say that is uh, if we actually open up uh, Portainer over here, uh, here we can see that uh, I have this set up to, uh, for the volume to be going to uh, my data folder that we set up in a previous video, actually in the first uh, Open Media Vault 6 video. Um, and I've got it in a Pico2 share folder. So if I open that up, which I've got here, you can see I've already, oops, <laughs> you can see I've already done some testing. I've had a couple of different folders here because I thought I had screwed something up. Turns out it was just a little bug. Uh, if I open this up, uh, there's nothing in here. So uh, let's actually upload a picture here. Uh, let's choose a file. Uh, let's upload that. Here we go. So now we've got uh, a URL, uh, Studio Lab, port 3001, and of course the uh, the actual file name that's there. 
There is, however, also an option uh, to just send a short link that doesn't have the file name in it. So you've got a couple of different options on how you want to share those links. But if we come back over to here and we take a look at this folder, uh, there's, there's nothing in here. So that's a little bug that I brought up. I didn't even realize it was a bug. I thought I had screwed something up. Talked to Mr. Lynch, Mr. Michael Lynch there, and uh, he's like, oh, thanks for pointing that out. Apparently he's rolled out a fix that we're actually gonna check out together in real time on this video. So let's actually jump over back over here. Um, so right here is our, uh, is our Docker Compose file, our stack, whatever you wanna call it for the sake of deploying this, of course. We're gonna do this in Portainer. This video does uh, expect that you will have a, at least a, a basic understanding of uh, Docker and Portainer. Uh, if you're not familiar with either of those, check out uh, the playlist that is part of this, or that this video is part of. Uh, this will actually be part of a, an OMV5 or Open Media Vault 5, as well as an Open Media Vault 6 playlist because this will work on either one the exact same way. So definitely check out the first couple of videos in this playlist if you're not familiar with Docker and Portainer and that sort of thing. Uh, that will help get you brought up to speed uh, so that this makes more sense. So up here at the top, we've got a version to uh, Docker Compose uh, up here, basically different uh, Docker Compose versions uh, have different capabilities. For the sake of this, version two is perfectly acceptable. Uh, below that, we've got a service of PicoShare. We can see that on line three. And then under PicoShare, we've got an environmental variable where we're gonna set the port. I love that he made it so we can change the port if we wanna do that uh, to 3001. <clears throat> below that, we've got a, uh, a PicoShare shared password. Uh, this is basically what you want the password to be for your, uh, for your login. Uh, that's, I copied and pasted that uh, a moment ago when we logged in uh, to the dashboard. So that's what that is. Um, again, we've got port uh, 3001 for both sides of that. Uh, you can change that if you'd like. Uh, just make sure that uh, if you change this port up here, you also change it here and uh, probably here as well. Uh, however, you could just, if you wanted to, I believe, probably just change this to something else. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it as 3001, oops, like so. And then again, <clears throat> Uh, we've got a volume that we kind of talked about. This is the mount point that I set up uh, in uh, Open Media Vault 6 when we set up this instance. And then of course I told it to, to store this in PicoShare 2. Now for the sake of testing here, I'm gonna change this to actually PicoShare 3, uh, just so that we've got uh, another folder so we're, we know that we're not interfering with previous things, nothing's gonna translate over or whatever. So. Um, and below that, we've got a container name. Uh, because we're deploying this in Portainer, we don't necessarily need this, but if we were gonna do this via command line or SSH, uh, you definitely want a container name in there. And below that, we've got an image of mtlinch slash picoshare. Now, we definitely want to change this to either latest or the specific version uh, that Michael gave me in the previous email, uh, which I believe was version 102. Uh, but what I wanna do is come over to here uh, and grab this. I'm actually just gonna grab this last little bit here like so. Um, and then I'm gonna come back over here to Portainer and I'm gonna update that like so. And then, uh, you know what, I screwed all of this up. What I'm gonna do is copy that. Uh, I'm going to come down here and uh, remove this stack. Um, you won't have to do this, of course. You haven't deployed this yet. So uh, this is just something I've gotta do, uh, like so. And now I can come back over here and paste all of that back in there uh, with this new version of uh, 102 and of course PicoShare 3 there. So what I'm gonna do uh, is click update the stack. In your case, you'll click on deploy the stack and we're gonna hang out, wait for this to do its thing real quick. Uh, the other thing I wanna do is come back over to here um, and just have this folder up just so we can actually see PicoShare 3 be created in real time here. So let's open this back up down here. Now we have a PicoShare 3 folder and we actually have um, a database in here, I believe, let me let me double check this. So this is a SQLite database to the mounted volume. So yeah, that is a SQLite database that was created in this folder. Uh, and again, there's nothing in here, but let's come back over to here. Uh, let's refresh this. Of course, this is a brand new install, uh, so we're not gonna actually have anything in here. Uh, let, me, let me minimize that. So let's grab a file here uh, and let's upload the 40K image there and let's come back over. Okay, so it does not store it there. That's just something good to know. Uh, so basically, if you wanted to, uh, in this editor here, uh, where I've got this stored as data, uh, you could actually put that in config uh, and it would be just fine. Uh, I just wanted to test data to see what would happen here. Uh, so if you if you had a config folder like we set up in that one of those first OMV6 videos, uh, you could absolutely put that basically wherever. Uh, it's not gonna give you direct access to those files just as a security thing. So now we've got this file set up. Oops, let's come back over to here. 
And so now if I click this, uh, there it opens the file. Uh, here is one other thing, uh, Michael, if you're watching this, something I would love to see uh, is actually have um, these links. Let's come back over here to files. I would love to have this link uh, open any new tab uh, or a new window or something so that we don't accidentally overwrite this page. After being a web developer for so long, it's just one of those little things. Um, also, after having talked uh, again to Michael about this, somewhere on this page, uh, he I think he plans on adding an additional download link uh, column over here so that you can get the short link if you wanted to do that. If you don't have the short link option yet, uh, what you can do though is just uh, right click this, uh, click copy address and paste that in there. And here we actually get the short URL. Uh, so I, I, again, I believe he plans on adding uh, an actual, you know, I call him over here for a copy link. Uh, that's something that we talked about via email. So that's the basic setup of this. Of course, if you wanted to go through the process of making this available to the internet, uh, you will need a few things to make that happen securely. I advise a reverse proxy. I use an internet proxy manager. I also use Cloudflare uh, and I use Cloudflare SSLs in, and, and then import those SSLs from Cloudflare into Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, I will leave a link to that in the description because we haven't covered that in this series. Uh, so I will have a link to one of those videos in the description down below where you can check that out. In fact, probably a couple of videos, uh, one to set up Nginx Proxy Manager, one to import SSLs, just simplifies things a ton. But uh, if, if you would like to just check this out, let's do that now. So uh, what we're gonna do is come over here to, uh, to Cloudflare. I've got my dnb.wtf uh, domain name set up and running. Uh, right there is my uh, home's IP address that I've already got blurred out. Uh, so you can't see that. But uh, what we wanna do here is uh, add a, a record. I wanna change this to a CNAME record. I'm gonna call this PS for Pico Share. Um, and then I'm going to do a tab and then at. So it'll be ps.dnb.wtf, great short URL there. Uh, I'm gonna leave this as proxy because I already have uh, an SSL installed from here to Nginx Proxy Manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save right there. <clears throat> and here we go. So what I wanna do next is actually jump over to Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, here we can see that is the WTF uh, SSL that I've got installed there. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll click on uh, hosts, proxy hosts, add a proxy host. I'm gonna paste that in there and hit enter. Uh, our scheme will be HTTP because uh, this container does not have a built-in SSL uh, or a self-signed certificate in this case. Uh, so we're just gonna leave that as it is. Um, for the host name, I actually don't know the IP address of my host name. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do ping uh, studio lab. Uh, so it's 1.4. So I'll do 192.168.1.4. Uh, my port was 3001, as we saw uh, right over here uh, in that area there. So we'll come back over. Uh, we're going to cache assets, we're going to block exploits, we're going to enable WebSocket support. Uh, we're going to switch over here to the SSL tab, and we're going to do the WTF SSL certificate. I'm just going to check all these boxes and click save. So then if we come down here and click on right here. So now I'm not logged in. I've got a different URL. So the cookie I had that I was logged to, into uh, with on the studiolab.local doesn't work. So what I'll do is come back over to Portainer. I'm just gonna grab this password, change that password for, for your own sake, change that password. Um, then I'm gonna come back over to here, I'm gonna log in, I'm gonna paste that, I'm gonna click authenticate. So here we are logged into ps.dnb.wtf. Uh, of course, this is PicoShare. So uh, what we wanna do here is actually just choose a file and let's just go ahead and grab that 40K again. Here we've got a couple of different links, the full length and the short link. You can share either of those as you see fit. Um, you can also come back over here and see that if we hover over this uh, and open this in a new uh, in a new tab uh, or new window, I guess. Here we can see that is the short link by default. Uh, so that is there, of course. I would like to see this open in a new window, uh, but that's simple enough to do. Um, let's see. So we've got an account up there. There's not, not really a whole lot going on in here, to be completely honest. Uh, upload just brings us back here. One other thing I didn't mention is that uh, you can uh, change how long you'd like this to be uh, available. These files will expire after a given amount of time. I do know that Michael is working on making those, uh, ha having more options in there for that. So uh, these are just the ones that are in here for now. More options are coming down the down the line here. Um, and so uh, just something to keep in mind there. Uh, also, uh, we when we talked about this earlier, um, I did, originally this was, you know, one 
1.0.2, I believe. Uh, if you leave that at 1.0.2, uh, basically this will never update. So uh, it's probably in uh, everybody's best interest uh, to do this as latest if you want to keep con uh, continuing to get uh, the latest features as they become available. The other last thing that I wanted to mention has to do with uh, redundancy and backup with this. Uh, Michael was was cool about the way he built this and actually integrated it into a service called Lightstream. And if you if you have a Lightstream account, you can plug all of your information in here. Uh, you know, as far as your your shared secret, uh, I guess that's your password. Disregard that. Uh, but as far as like your key ID, your access key, your bucket, your endpoint, uh, if you've got all of those bits of information from your Lightstream account, you can plug those in there, and this will automatically back up. Uh, from your account here to your Lightstream account so that if something does go wrong with your Docker container, uh, you can reconnect and it will automatically re-import all of those files from Light, uh, from Lightstream back into PicoShares. So kind of a cool little redundancy thing that he's built in there uh, if you want to uh, get a Lightstream account or if you already have one. So definitely thought that was kind of a cool little thing that he's added in there as well. But Anyway, I think that kind of covers everything I wanted to cover in this video. We sh we talked about uh, PicoStream, just kind of a general sense. We talked about uh, file expiration and how there's more of that coming uh, for different options there. Uh, getting this set up, of course, in Docker, using Portainer, uh, also getting uh, a, a domain name set up on this with an SSL so that you can keep things secure. Uh, and of course, I, I will have links to all of this stuff in the description down below so that uh, if you want to go check out uh, the, the, the GitHub, uh, the hub.docker.com, uh, the videos on where I show how to set up Nginx Proxy Manager uh, with Cloudflare SSLs, all that kind of stuff will be linked in the description down below. Uh, so anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. It really would help me out quite a bit. But with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.